Pyrolysis oil, sometimes also known as biocrude or biooil, is a synthetic fuel under investigation as substitute for petroleum. It is obtained by heating dried biomass without oxygen in a reactor at a temperature of about 500 degrees Celsius with subsequent cooling. Pyrolytic oil or bio oil is a kind of tar and normally contains levels of oxygen too high to be considered a hydrocarbon. This high oxygen content results in non-volatility, corrosiveness, emissivity with fossil fuels, thermal instability, and a tendency to polymerize when exposed to air. As such, it is distinctly different from petroleum products. Removing oxygen from bio-oil or nitrogen from algal bio-oil is called upgrading. Standards. There are few standards for pyrolysis oil because of limited efforts to produce it. One of the few standards is from ASTM. Topic: <inaudible> Feedstock decomposition. Pyrolysis is a well-established technique for decomposition of organic material at elevated temperatures in the absence of oxygen into oil and other constituents. In second-generation biofuel applications—forest and agricultural residues, wood waste and energy crops can be used as feedstock. <inaudible> <inaudible> wood pyrolysis When wood is heated above 270 degrees Celsius it begins a process of decomposition called carbonization. If air is absent the final product, since there is no oxygen present to react with the wood, is charcoal. If air, which contains oxygen, is present, the wood will catch fire and burn when it reaches a temperature of about 400 to 500 degrees Celsius and the fuel product is wood ash. If wood is heated away from air, first the moisture is driven off and until this is complete, the wood temperature remains at about 100 to 110 degrees Celsius. When the wood is dry its temperature rises and at about 270 degrees Celsius it begins to spontaneously decompose and, at the same time, heat is evolved. This is the well-known exothermic reaction which takes place in charcoal burning. At this stage evolution of the by-products of wood carbonization starts. These substances are given off gradually as the temperature rises and at about 450 degrees Celsius the evolution is complete. The solid residue, charcoal, is mainly carbon about 70% and then of tarry substances which can be driven off or decomposed completely only by raising the temperature to above about 600 degrees Celsius to produce bioca, a high carbon, fine-grained residue that today is produced through modern pyrolysis processes, which is the direct thermal decomposition of biomass in the absence of oxygen, which prevents combustion, to obtain an array of solid bioca, liquid, pyrolysis oil bio oil pyrolysis oil and gas singers products the specific yield from the pyrolysis is dependent on process conditions such as temperature and can be optimized to produce either energy or bioca temperatures of 400 to 500 degrees celsius 752 to 932 degrees fahrenheit produce more char while temperatures above 700 degrees celsius 1292 degrees fahrenheit favor the yield of liquid and gas fuel components pyrolysis occurs more quickly at the higher temperatures typically requiring seconds instead of hours High temperature pyrolysis is also known as gasification, and produces primarily singers. Typical yields are 60% biooil, 20% biochar, and 20% singers. By comparison, slow pyrolysis can produce substantially more char approximately 50%. Once initialized, both processes produce net energy. For typical inputs, the energy required to run a fast pyrolyzer is approximately 15% of the energy that it outputs. Modern pyrolysis plants can use the singers created by the pyrolysis process and output three to nine times the amount of energy required to run. <laughs> Algal pyrolysis 
Algae may be subjected to high temperatures approximately 500 degrees Celsius and normal atmospheric pressures. The resultant products include oil and nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. There are numerous papers on the pyrolysis of lignocellulosic biomass. However, very few reports are available for algal bio-oil production via pyrolysis. Miao et al. 2004b performed fast pyrolysis of chlorella protothecoids and microcystis aeruginosa at 500 degrees Celsius, and bio-oil yields of 18% and 24% were obtained, respectively. The bio-oil exhibited a higher carbon and nitrogen content, lower oxygen content than wood bio-oil. When Chlorella protothecoids was cultivated heterotrophically, bio-oil yield increased to 57.9% with a heating value of 41 MJ per kilogram Recently when microalgae become a hot research topic as the third generation of biofuel, pyrolysis has drawn more attention as a potential conversion method for algal biofuel production. Pan et al. investigated slow pyrolysis of nanochloropsis sp, residue with and without the presence of HZSM5 catalyst and obtained bio-oil rich in aromatic hydrocarbons from catalytic pyrolysis. Algal pyrolytic liquids separate into two phases with the top phase called bio-oil Campanella et al. 2012, Jenner et al. 2011a. The higher heating values HHV of algal bio-oil are in the range of 31–36 MJ per kilogram, generally higher than those of lignocellulosic feedstocks. Pyrolytic bio-oil consists of compounds with lower mean molecular weights and contains more low boiling compounds than bio-oil produced by hydrothermal liquefaction. These properties are similar to those of Illinois shale oil Jenner et al. 2011a, Varden et al. 2012, which may indicate that pyrolytic bio-oil is suited for petroleum fuel replacement. In addition, the high protein content in microalgae led to a high N content in the bio-oil, resulting in undesirable NOx emissions during combustion and deactivation of acidic catalysts when co-processed in existing 10 crude oil refineries. Algal bio-oil had better qualities in many aspects than those produced from lignocellulosic biomass. For example, algal bio-oil has a higher heating value, a lower oxygen content and a greater than 7 picohenries value. However, upgrading towards the removal of nitrogen and oxygen in the bio-oil is still necessary before it can be used as drop-in fuels. Algal hydrothermal liquefaction Hydrothermal liquefaction HTL is a thermal depolymerization process used to convert wet biomass into an oil sometimes referred to as bio oil or bio crude under a moderate temperature and high pressure of 350 degrees Celsius 662 degrees Fahrenheit and 3000 pounds per square inch 21000 kilopascals the crude like oil, or bio -oil has high energy density with a lower heating value of 33.8 to 36.9 MJ per kilogram and 5 to 20 Wt% percent oxygen and renewable chemicals. The HTL process differs from pyrolysis as it can process wet biomass and produce a bio oil that contains approximately twice the energy density of pyrolysis oil. Pyrolysis is a related process to HTL, but biomass must be processed and dried in order to increase the yield. The presence of water in pyrolysis drastically increases the heat of vaporization of the organic material, increasing the energy required to decompose the biomass. Typical pyrolysis processes require a water content of less than 40% to suitably convert the biomass to bio-oil. This requires considerable pretreatment of wet biomass such as tropical grasses, which contain a water content as high as 80–85%, and even further treatment for aquatic species, which can contain higher than 90% water content. Per algal HTL, the properties of the resulting bio-oil are affected by temperature, reaction time, algae species, algae concentration, reaction atmosphere, and catalysts, in subcritical water reaction conditions. Bio-crude oil 
Bio-oil typically requires significant additional treatment to render it suitable as a refinery feedstock to replace crude oil derived from petroleum, coal oil, or coal tar. Tar is a black mixture of hydrocarbons and free carbon obtained from a wide variety of organic materials through destructive distillation. Tar can be produced from coal, wood, petroleum, or peat. Pine tar is a sticky material produced by the high temperature carbonization of pine wood in anoxic conditions, dry distillation or destructive distillation. The wood is rapidly decomposed by applying heat and pressure in a closed container. The primary resulting products are charcoal and pine tar. Pine tar consists primarily of aromatic hydrocarbons, tar acids and tar bases. Components of tar vary according to the pyrolytic process e.g. method, duration, temperature and origin of the wood e.g. age of pine trees, type of soil and moisture conditions during tree growth. Birch tar is a substance liquid when heated derived from the dry distillation of the bark of the birch tree. It is compounded of phenols such as guaiacol, cresol, xylanol and creosol not to be confused with cresol, wood tar creosote is a colorless to yellowish greasy liquid with a smoky odor, produces a sooty flame when burned, and has a burned taste. It is non-buoyant in water, with a specific gravity of 1.037 to 1.087, retains fluidity at a very low temperature, and boils at 205 to 225 degrees Celsius. When transparent, it is in its purest form. Dissolution in water requires up to 200 times the amount of water as the base creosote. The creosote is a combination of natural phenols, primarily guaiacol and creosol, methylguaiacol, which will typically constitute 50% of the oil, second in prevalence, cresol and xylanol, the rest being a combination of monophenols and polyphenols. Pitch is a name for any of a number of viscoelastic polymers. Pitch can be natural or manufactured, derived from petroleum, coal tar or plants. Black liquor and tall oil is a viscous liquid byproduct wood pulp manufacturing. Rubber oil is the product of the pyrolysis method for recycling used tires. Topic: <inaudible> Biofuel <inaudible> <inaudible> Biofuels are synthesized from intermediary products such as singers using methods that are identical in processes involving conventional feedstocks, first-generation and second-generation biofuels. The distinguishing feature is the technology involved in producing the intermediary product, rather than the ultimate offtake. A biorefinery is a facility that integrates biomass conversion processes and equipment to produce fuels, power, heat, and value-added chemicals from biomass. The biorefinery concept is analogous to today's petroleum refinery, which produce multiple fuels and products from petroleum. Biodiesel is a diesel fuel derived from animal or plant lipids oils and fats. A variety of oils can be used as biodiesel feedstock. Wood diesel. A new biofuel was developed by the University of Georgia from wood chips. The oil is extracted and then added to unmodified diesel engines. Either new plants are used or planted to replace the old plants. The charcoal byproduct is put back into the soil as a fertilizer. This biofuel can actually be carbon negative, not just carbon neutral. Carbon negative decreases carbon dioxide in the air reversing the greenhouse effect not just reducing it. Algae fuels, can be produced from various types of algae, and are dependent on the technique and the part of the cells used. Some species of algae can produce 50% or more of their dry weight in the form of oil. The lipid, or oily part of the algae biomass can be extracted and converted into biodiesel through a process similar to that used for any other vegetable oil, or converted in a refinery into «drop-in» replacements for petroleum-based fuels. Algaculture can use waste materials such as sewage and without displacing land currently used for food production. See also. Biodiesel Hydrodeoxygenation Algae fuel Dry distillation Biofuel Second-generation biofuels <laughs>